Hello, everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of MSU Inside Out. It is our fourth show today after a week-long hiatus. And again, we have another great show for you guys today. We got a lot of good stuff. We got some hockey talk today. I'm Cole Clementich, your co-host. And I'm Janie Wonderlich. And as we were saying, we got some hockey talk today. We're going to have a head coach here joining us from the community. Parker's going to be talking some MSU domination. What else do we have, Janie? We have Be a Beaver Day going on here on campus today and tomorrow, and a familiar face is here to discuss that with us. And we also have a Minot State alum talking her success in the entrepreneurial field as well. So a lot of exciting things going on. Yeah, should be a lot of fun, like you said. And with that going on, Wolf is standing by with our campus news. Wolf, I hear there's a special event going on downtown. Yeah, there is a fundraiser hosted by the Domestic Violence Crisis Center uh, with food and drinks if you're over the age of 21. Have you guys heard about the Crisis Center? Yes, I've heard of it. I hear they do a lot of great volunteer work in the community. Yeah, you can uh, be a part of their volunteer work by just calling them over the phone because to be entirely honest, people less fortunate of us need all the help they can get. Uh, if you're over the age of 21, you can help them by helping fundraise the Domestic Violence Crisis Center by enjoying hops and hot dish. Local restaurants are competing for the title of Best Hop Dish, decided by the community starting tomorrow at 6 p.m. at the spot, East, uh, Northeast Minot. Tickets are $50 at the door, which you can find by looking up hops and hot dish on Facebook. Gamers tuning in may be interested in the MSU Esports Club Gaming Night. Hosted in the second floor of the Wellness Center tonight at 7. There will be tournaments for Mario Kart, Super Smash Brothers, and more with prizes. And free food available for all students and faculty. For those who have friends interested in going to college, MSU is hosting a Be a Beaver Day for today and tomorrow. Here, potential students can meet with faculty, sit in on course classes, eat in the dining hall, and tour the campus. Uh, more on this later in the show. That evening at 7.30, MSU's Division of Music is hosting a band concert at the Ann Nicole Nelson Theater, as well as a Sympathy Orchestra next Saturday on the 29th. More on that next week. This Saturday, the Northwest Arts Center is presenting Roxanne Olson, The Creative Life, a retrospective exhibition by Minot State alum, photographer, artist, and educator, Roxanne Olson. You can view her work at the Center's Walter Field Gallery from now until November 26. If you're looking for fun, the Wellness Center is hosting a dodgeball tournament on Monday at 8 p.m. with more details to be announced. Next week, spring registration for classes is open for all currently enrolled students. It is recommended that you meet with your advisor as soon as you can and work with them to determine the best courses for you. If you're in the professional communication department, we will be meeting during the COM 100 class in Swain 118. Thank you. Cole? Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, registration for sure. And uh, us comm majors will be meeting for comm 100. And uh, yeah, still got some work to do. I know I have to sign up for some senior level classes, kind of maybe have a little teardrop fall on my eye. But uh, yeah, put in that work for sure. And moving on from that, the Minot Minotauros Hockey Club is back for a brand new and exciting season as they are off to a hot start, sitting second in the Central Division with a 7-4-0 record. Joining us now to give a fairly early season preview, head coach Cody Campbell joins us. Coach, thank you for making some time today. No, thanks for having me. I appreciate it, Cole. Yeah, absolutely. So the first full off season for yourself this past summer to evaluate the team, you know, take us through that agenda. Yeah, I mean, looking at, at our group last year, we wanted to, to improve our offense and, and ability to score. Uh, and part of that we did with a, an early offseason trade to acquire Hunter Longy. Um, and, and then we just really wanted to, to round out our group with, uh, with more depth and, and build our back end uh, from D, our D and our goalies back up because we lost both our goalies who were both very good last year for us. Um, and just a lot of work that goes into that in terms of uh, recruiting calls and, and doing our homework on players and scouting and everything else. And um, thus far early in the season, it's, it's, it's 11 games into a, to a 60 plus game season. But uh, early on, we've been happy and encouraged with uh, the group we've put together for sure. No, that's good. And you mentioned new players like Hunter Longy coming in via trade, you know, lots of new players, but also every year some returning veterans like notable guys with Colby Joseph, who was a team's top goal scorer last year, a big body in Trevor Stokowiak. You know, how do you like the roster and how have the guys been able to kind of buy in at this time before yeah, training camp? It, our, our returners and veteran players have uh, 
done a fantastic job. They, they know what the expectation is. They know what to expect from me. They've had a, had a year of, of learning kind of the style and structure that uh, I believe is, is how you have to play to have success at this level. And, and they've done a great job of passing that on to, to the first year players. And uh, I think a lot of our first year players' success early on here uh, can be largely accredited to, to our, our returners, the like Colby Josephs and, and Stacks and Joe Westland, and Nico Hannison, Ben Johnson. Um, those kind of guys because uh, I, I think they've made the, the transition for the younger guys much easier. Oh, that's really good. You know, it helps to have some of the veteran minds in the locker room kind of be leaders. And, you know, you also mentioned goaltending. That has looked very stout so far. Lawton Zacher just announced his D1 commitment to Brown University. Dane Kachuras looks solid too. You know, how encouraged are you by the net mining so far? Yeah, again, it's uh, it's early in the season, but we've been we, we've been really happy with it. Uh, Lawton's had a had a great start, and uh, obviously was recognized by by getting an offer to to go play Division One college hockey at an Ivy League school. So I don't know that you can get much better than that opportunity, academically and athletically. Uh, and and Dane's been really solid as well. Um, he, he hasn't got necessarily the same amount of run support uh, as Lawton has, but uh, he, he's given up two goals in, in pretty much every start he's had, which uh, if, if that's what our, your goal he's given up and you can ex expect that kind of consistency out of him, um, you're probably going to be in a pretty good spot. So we've been encouraged by it. Again, we, we've just tried to keep the guys very level-headed about the fact we, we have had a some success early on and, and that's great and important but it only gets harder from here on out yeah two goals against per night is really good especially you know when evaluating the goaltenders you know the team looked dominant on opening night controlled play and tempo a lot you know how good was it to get started on the right foot uh it was it was important obviously any any time that we can play in the mesa and in in front of our our passionate fans it uh, it's something that, that our team takes pride in and, and we draw energy off of off of those fans and, and the energy that they bring to the building. So um, to, to have a, a really good solid team win on, on opening night was uh, was exciting and, and it's it's always good when you can start things off on the right foot and you don't dig yourself a hole that you have to climb out of. Oh yeah, for sure. And real quick, we're almost out of time here, but expectations going forward for the team. Obviously, you want to get players to play to fulfill their dream of playing D1. But uh, what do you guys look forward to? Yeah, I mean that's that's most important. That's what they're here for is to to develop and and accomplish that goal of of playing Division One college hockey. Um, but additionally, we just we just want our guys to continue to improve. Uh, I think we. We have a group that if, if they continue to, to improve consistently throughout the course of the season, we're going to be in a pretty good spot at the end. No, good stuff there, Coach. And, yeah, thanks for the time today. That's all we have for you. But, uh, yeah, thank you so much. And there you have it. That was head coach Cody Campbell of the Minot Minotauros giving us season insight and also Colorado native celebrating the Avalanche Cup win just like I was as That's well. Right. Yeah, thank you so much again, Coach. And, uh, yeah, when we come back from an underwriter break, Anna is going to take a look at the weather for us. It is pretty warm today, so good news there. And also, Janie will be sitting with a former major. Don't go anywhere. You are watching MSU Inside Out. Thank you to all of our underwriters. Trinity Health is a comprehensive healthcare system based in Minot, North Dakota. Fiance, with all your prom and bridal needs, located in downtown Minot. KCJB, 910 AM, Minot's news and information station. Buffalo Wild Wings, wings, beer, sports. KIZZ FM, Z94, playing today's hit music. Mix 99.9. Minot's Music Mix. SRT, offering a number of services including phone, TV, internet, and security. KRRZ, 1390 AM, Minot's Classic Hits. KZPR 105.3 FM, Minot's Rock Station. East End, where the poor is worth so much more, located in downtown Minot. 
Qdoba, easy, on time, full of flavor. Nice impressions. No job is too big or too small. Located in downtown Minot. MSU Beavers Hockey. Online info at msubeavers.com. Forward communication. Connecting professionals in the Midwest. El Azteca. Authentic Mexican food on North Broadway near the airport. MSU Theater Department, year-round entertainment. Red and Green, MSU's student-run newspaper. MSU Bookstore, for all your campus needs. Minot Nutrition Addiction, offering healthy smoothies and meal replacements on the go. H Bar B Construction for all your oil field needs. Bears Cat Donuts, located on Broadway across from Minot State Campus. Hello everyone and welcome back to MSU Inside Out and Janie, what a warm day it was. I mean, being able to experience this last minute warm weather before it gets cold out, you know, how awesome is it? It is really nice, especially to just have those sporadic couple days throughout the cold months. You know, you really learn to appreciate it and get out and actually enjoy the weather. Oh, but yeah. we are curious, Hannah, is this warm weather going to stick around or is this probably the end of it for the year? side of the state, middle of the state, it is nice low 70s right now. Um, currently in not 72, Williston 70, and then Dickinson is 73. Um, Dickinson is also, we good? Cool. Well, we're good, but Dickinson is not because it is in a red flag warning. It's a little dry over there. And um, so with a low humidity and the warmer-ish temperatures today, it's kind of a really bad day for setting fires. So maybe don't do that. Um, no fireworks, no bonfires, um, but hopefully this weekend there's going to be some precipitation coming into the state. So it should hopefully make those um, red flag conditions go away. Um, looking at the current temperature in Minot, North Dakota, the high was 75 today. Currently it is 72. It was pretty sunny earlier today, but unfortunately it's starting to get a bit cloudy. Um, the low is only going to be 41 tonight, so not too bad. Um, unfortunately, we're going to look at the rest of the week and that looks to be not so great. So tomorrow's fine, 61 degrees. Saturday, it starts to get a little bit cloudy, starts to be a little bit rainy. And then with those 39 degree temperatures in the evening, Sunday looks to be like it or Monday might be um, some actual snow. So if you haven't prepared for that yet, you might want to start mentally preparing. You do have quite a few like a couple days to be able to prepare for the snow, get out your winter jacket, put away the air conditioner um, before it hopefully kind of warms up a little bit towards the end of the week, but still not quite shorts and t-shirt weather like we have today. Um, so Emily, Janie, you guys looking great. They're seeing you guys both at the interview table again. I know, yes, very excited. Um, Emily is joining us again, an admissions counselor here at Minot State University. We are so excited to have her back. <laughs> Many of you might recognize her. She was a host on uh, last year's show for M MSU Inside Out, so very excited to have her back. Be a Beaver Day for high school students is now um, in play today and tomorrow, and Emily is here just to tell us about it, tell us what's going on. Um, Emily, why don't we start with how weird is it that you're back on camera? Is it weird or does it feel like normal? 
Oh, this feels natural. I yeah. <laughs> am so excited to be back on camera. Mm -hmm. um, I have so much love for our, our department. So yes, yes, this feels great. <laughs> I know, we were, we, were, yeah, we were really excited when we found out that you were gonna be a part of our show. So so let's start with Build a Beaver. Build a Beaver. Build a Beaver <laughs> is an M Life event. So you can see where my confusion came from. <laughs> but Be a Beaver Day is going on. So tell us about that. What does that look like in the admissions department? What does it look like for high school students? What is the whole thing? Yeah, so we've been planning this event for a few months and so basically juniors but mostly seniors attend this event it's a great way for them to sit in college classes attend a bunch of events so they're starting at 8 a.m and then they might be finishing at 9 p.m um, so they can yeah. kind of build their own schedule which is cool i've been telling students that way you don't have to imagine what college is like mm -hmm. can see what it's like so you don't have to watch movies and be like is that what college is really like so mm -hmm. um, they've all been really excited we've been doing campus tours um, and a lot of the students are excited to attend next year. Yeah, it's it's so awesome that you guys are doing that because I remember graduating from high school and preparing for college and I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just kind of had to pick something like right out of high school because in high school you're not given um, a lot you get you're getting a few but very limited choices about what you can like go into and try out so i think it's so cool how msu does that and they allow high school students to actually sit in on um, multiple classes it doesn't even have to be one program does it like it can be oh yeah it can ones. they can be a nursing wanting to be a nursing student but they could be okay. sitting in our um, audio production class or okay. they can go to an art class or a criminal justice class yeah so that's really cool because mm -hmm. we have had a lot of students that are like I don't know and I'm like same girl when I <laughs> yeah. was 18 I didn't know either so yeah. so it is really cool that they can just kind of explore all of their options yeah but at the same time they don't have to make a decision right then and there with what they're wanting right. to do they for their next four time. years yeah they have time to think about it and yes. they can, you know just yes. get their toes wet a little and bit. I always encourage everyone to come to campus mm -hmm. um, like explore all of your options before making a decision or anything like that but yeah. that way they can get a feel for our community that we built here. Yeah. As you should, as an admissions counselor. Yeah. So speaking of which, you recently graduated this last May from the communication department. So tell us a little bit about what post-grad life has looked like for you. What has the process been? How did you end up at Minot State? Well, I ended up at Minot State. I was Googling affordable out-of-state schools, randomly decided to try it. Uh, one of the best decisions that I ever made. So, so <laughs> glad that I did that. Post-grad life has been interesting. I feel like no one really prepares you for it. Um, sometimes I think you're gonna go into this career and okay, that's where I'm gonna be for the next 30 right. years. But I've had some um, twists and turns, but I feel like I've landed in a position that is really um, fit for me. But yeah, Good. it's it's interesting. It's lonely sometimes, but also really great other times. Yeah. And so I like to tell students that are close to graduating, like, hey, like if you need advice, come to me. Right. <laughs> like I've experienced this firsthand. No, that's... but it's been mostly positives. Good. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. So, um, what else did you, or what did you learn from the comm department that you're now applying in the admissions office at Minot yeah. State? Yeah. So as an admissions counselor, I've actually it's kind of funny, but I've been getting a lot of PR, like real life PR practice, and that's mm -hmm. what my focus was in school. Whether that's uh, for our one event, Future Palooza, like I could not find the microphone and I was supposed to be announcing all of this stuff. Right. So like running around doing that or finding water bottles for people or um, if we don't have something set out or set up for someone's appointment. I've just learned a lot of, or used a lot of those PR skills, um, but also mm -hmm. just like people skills that we learn in the department, mm -hmm. how to communicate with whether that's uh, different types of people or just random people in general right. kind of just being comfortable talking to strangers yeah which I know yeah. everyone's like oh the auction class like they're yeah. nervous to go talk to the community it actually really prepares you for right. real life when you yeah. have to be like a real adult so. I agree I definitely <laughs> so, yes. agree. we love our people in the comp department yes yes <laughs> well thank you Emily for joining us once again on MSU Inside thank Out we're you. very happy that you got to be on the show Still to come, we'll have an update on Minot State and local sports, as well as we will hear from MSU alum thriving in her career field. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this underwriter break.
Campbell, everyone, and welcome back to MSU Inside Out again. Another few good interviews from Coach Campbell and Emily Norman, and we got more on the way here as a MSU alum is making some headlines on her new podcasting career. Trevin Badger is standing by with us. Yeah, thank you, Cole. MSU alum and now an entrepreneur in the communication field, Kayla Cote joins me. So, Kayla, thank you for coming. How are you doing today? Thank you for having me. I'm doing really well. Awesome. That's great to hear. So you were on campus today and you were talking to the art and communication classes on the topic of podcasts and you yourself have found success in that field with your Fit Fabulous Life podcast. Can you just explain to me what you talked about on there and kind of what the process is with that? Yes. So the Fit Fabulous Life is helping people elevate their life and well-being. And so I bring on different guests from local area as well as across the nation to talk about mindfulness, movement, and motivation. That's great. So you've said you have a lot of guests on your show. What have been like some of your favorite, most like entertaining guests to have? You know, that's such a tough question, but I love when people ask. I've had local guests that have started small companies and everything up to um, some guests from Los Angeles. So I recently started getting into celebrity guests. So recently I had Lauren Roxburgh on. She's the body whisperer and she works with some really great people out in Los Angeles. And she was on my show recently. That's great. That's awesome to be here. So your first episode started in 2020 and now you have over 3,000 listens and 80, 80 plus episodes that you've produced. So how has that journey been for you since then and how has it like affected your, your life? The journey has been incredible. You know, coming up on the end of season four, we're at 100 episodes in uh, first week of November. And just to be there is, is some, something that was just accidental that became now a career that I'm building. So it's been really, really helpful in uh, helping me develop my public speaking skills as well as just conducting interviews. And you know what? Having a lot of fun. Yeah, that's always the most important part. So during your time here at Minot State, you studied art with a minor in marketing. What have you taken from that that you've taken into your job field now? A lot of the things that I've taken with me are my graphic design skills. I've been able to build out my entire brand on my own, including my website. So creating that cohesive visual storytelling really has helped me to create the materials it needs to put myself out there as a podcaster. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for your time. We don't have a lot, but everyone appreciates that. And Again, that was Kayla Cote explaining her growing success with her podcast, Fit Fabulous Lifestyle. Back to you, Cole. Yes, thank you so much there, Trevin and Janie. Podcasting, you know, I it's know. always a fun field to get into. Have you been yes. doing one at all lately? No, I don't have a podcast. The only podcast I've done have been for the Neil Roberts classes. I did enjoy making them, um, but who knows what the future holds in that aspect of it. Yeah. I've always enjoyed listening to podcasts. So Yeah, we'll see for sure. And going from podcasting to the sports world, Parker is standing by. MSU Hockey has looked really good this past weekend. And Parker, have you been to any games yet at all? Uh, Cole, I unfortunately haven't been able to catch a game this year, but I know and I've been hearing that they have been off to a very impressive start, uh, continuing off the momentum they had last year. Um, it has been complete domination for the Minot State men's hockey team this season. They recently improved to 6-0 and on the year with two home wins over the weekend. The Beavers outscored the Midland University Warriors 25-3 to in their two games. Junior forward Carter Barley scored a career-high four goals on Saturday and six goals total on the weekend. The number two ranked Beavers have a week off before they travel to Jamestown next weekend to play the number 11 ranked Jimmies. Monad State's men's basketball team is finally back after nearly nine months. The Beavers have just one more exhibition game before their season starts on November 11th. After playing three exhibition games at Canada back in August. They will host the Dickinson State University Blue Hawks at three o'clock this Saturday. The Beavers will look to redshirt senior Cameron Dunphy to be the leader for this young roster after losing multiple big-time contributors from last season. Among this young roster are seven brand new players that should look to play a huge impact for the team this year. The Monat State football team is still searching for their first win of the year with the season winding down. The team has losses ranging from seven points to Southwest Minnesota State to 45 points to Bemidji State. Three of their final four games will be on the road, so getting that first win will not be easy. However, this Saturday, the Beavers have a good chance at getting that elusive win. 
The team will be traveling to Iowa to play the 0-7 Upper Iowa University Peacocks. In a, battle, in a battle of two winless teams, expect the Beavers to come out strong and with something to prove. Cole, the Beavers did defeat the Peacocks last year. Do you think they can repeat this year? I, for sure. I mean, they have the talent. They got good players like Peyton Lamore. He's a big play wide receiver. Ali Muhammad, you just carry the rock with him. Like, he can get you some long yards. It's, it'll be disappointing if they don't get the win this week, but I'm confident that they will for sure, Parker. And, yeah, thank you so much again there and uh, lots of good sports talk. And, yes. uh, yeah, Janie, what else yeah, do we have Yeah, but before here? we finish up the show, we do have a short promo for you guys, so don't go anywhere, and we'll wrap up the show when we get back. Minot State's small enough that you get to experience a lot of good things. To get into radio right away, TV right away, work as a director, a producer, or a talent on the show, it's really fun to be involved doing all those things. We've got the new technical equipment. Everything you work with here, for the most part, is going to be out there in the real world. Neil Roberts is a great mentor. He has been seasoned in TV and radio and able to bring that experience to the classroom. And he's personable. He has a passion for it, and he wants everyone else to share that passion as well. I'm the director and producer of Inside Out. I work with a lot of different people and make sure that everyone's satisfied and everybody's working together to make communication what it is. Over this semester, everybody's worked together and found this rhythm with each other, and it all just comes together and makes a really nice finished product. Hello, everyone, and welcome back after that quick promo. Janie, we had such a great show today talking hockey with head coach Cody Campbell of the Toros. Parker highlighting some MSU mm -hmm. hockey and some other MSU sports. You know, what else did we yeah, have? Yeah, I really enjoyed today? Um, hearing Kayla talk about the podcast stuff. I just think that it's was really cool, cool yeah. like having seen the alum come back to Minot State and, you know, just influencing other students and being like open about their career fields and everything. I think that's just it's a really cool thing for students to see because it seems so far off for us, but in reality, it's right around the corner. So I loved having mm -hmm. or like having her here too, and then of course having Emily back on the show was really oh, sweet yeah, for too. Sure. Yeah, also a good weather report from Hannah as well. But a couple of reminders for you guys. MSU Inside the Dam podcast every Monday at 7.30. You can catch us there live. Also, Minot Baseball LLC of the Northwoods League reveals their team name tonight. Look for some content on next week's show. Yes, and then one final announcement that we have. The MSU's Got Talent is officially a go. It will be happening on November 3rd at 7 p.m. So um, students, the deadline, the deadline to sign up is tomorrow. So if you haven't reached out to me yet and you want to be in the talent show, uh, my email is on the posters. You can find it there. But besides that, great show for today, and we will see you guys all next week.